Hello, my name is Divyansh Jain and I am creating this video on the topic The Future of Space Colonization that is the possibility and feasibility of creating future space colonies. Since my very childhood, I have been vastly interested in the entire universe that surrounds us. And it would not be wrong when I say, the earth is the cradle of humanity. However, humanity cannot live in a cradle forever. With this thought, I come on to the necessity and the inevitability of creating future space colonies in space. Firstly, the earth's ever-growing population has already crossed 7 billion and is expected to cross 8 billion within the next decade. Add to this the limited habitable area and the vastly depleting resources of which the rate of replenishment are minimal as compared to the rate of depletion. So creating space colonies has become inevitable at the present moment. However, this does not come without its challenges. These challenges include high costs, construction methodology like what will be the uh, materials, where, what will be the origin of the materials, the basis of the settlement, the first constructions and how will the waste be disposed of the settlement uh, of the residents living within the settlement. Add to this the problem of radiation shielding because the residents living within the space colony would be exposed to a vast amount of radiation. Besides the, uh, the vast amount of space debris in space, even the smallest particles moving at such high velocities can cause great damage to the space colonies even upon uh, impact. However, there are a lot of opportunities which can be further employed. These include vast amounts of energy available in space as form in the form of solar energy. Alongside, there are vast amount of resources present in space which can be used to fuel the activities of the space colony. I had recently taken part in NASA Space Settlement Design Competition and it was there that I realized that there are three main components to a good space colony. This is the structure that I had come up with as part of the competition. So the psychological factors include Earth-like atmosphere including Earth-like pressurization systems to give the, a feeling of assurance and comfort to the residents living within the space colony. The psychological factors are a method to provide assurance to the uh, residents living within the colony that they are at home, away from home. These also include day and night cycles similar to what go on on Earth. Also, recreational activities and normal societal functions as they go on on Earth also add to the comfort level of the people. Besides, natural views of space and natural views of Earth are also preferable if available. Now, coming on to the structural aspect of a good space settlement is firstly uh, inducing artificial gravity because humans cannot survive without gravity. So what I had done and came up with was I had used a torus with proper dimensions to accommodate the entire population and rotating the colony at such rates which are safe for the humans and also induces artificial gravity due to the centrifugal force. Apart from this, specific area allocations along with differentiated gravity levels are also preferable in a good space settlement. Now coming on to the sustainability of such a space colony, firstly, Energy sustenance is one of the most important criterion. Apart from this, agricultural self-sustenance also plays a major role because importing food material from Earth to and fro again becomes impractical and uh, is very expensive. So what I had uh, used was using hydroponics and aeroponics to carry out agriculture. Apart from this, transportation and emergency isolation systems are very important. Transportation includes transportation within the colony as well as transportation from Earth to the space colony. Now finally coming on to the benefits of what such a colony holds for us in the future. Firstly the overall life cycle cost becomes much cheaper because we are utilizing the vast amount of resources present in space along with the vast amount of solar energy. Also there is an improved quality of life because the people get all amounts of facilities and luxuries that are not uh, as much widespread as on earth. So finally I'd like to conclude by once again quoting the earth is the cradle of humanity but mankind cannot live in a cradle forever. Thank you.